three, two, one, Dr. Payam. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and today I will cover the mean value theorem, which is a theorem that will leave you rolling on the floor and laughing. Finally got it after the third take. And rolling because it involves Rolle's theorem. But now let's our state the mean value theorem first of all. So a theorem, it's a very neat theorem that relates uh, slopes of secant lines with slopes of tangent lines. So if f, suppose you have a continuous function on a closed interval, and of course it involves derivatives, so we also have to assume it's differentiable. So n, f is differentiable on the open interval, a, b, then it turns out that the following quantity can be simplified, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And I'll tell you in a second what that is. This quantity turns out it equals to f prime of c. f prime of c for some c. c in the open interval a, b. So if someone's very mean to you, you can say, hey, you're very continuous on the closed interval AB and differentiable on the open interval AB, because then you can apply the mean value theorem. And Justin Bieber said, what do you mean? In fact, what does that mean? So what is this quantity? It turns out if you have two points, A and B, and this is your function, let's say, then this quantity f of b minus f of a over b minus a is just the slope of this secant line. So it's the slope of the line connecting b f of b and a f of a. f of a. So the slope of that line by the point by the slope formula is just equals to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. On the one hand, it's the slope. On the other hand, this theorem tells you that this slope can be written as a derivative. In other words, there is some tangent line in between a and b whose slope is exactly that. In other words, there is some tangent line which is precisely parallel to that line. So if this is c, then the slope equals to f prime of c. Or if you like physics, this quantity I think can be described as the average velocity or I guess the end velocity. It's just how much you're at the end minus how much you had, what had the beginning divided by the, app by the time. And what this says is this average velocity is actually equal to instantaneous velocity at some point. In other words, if your average speed was you know, 60 miles per hour, it turns out um, at some point you were actually going 60 miles per hour. So it's pretty cool. And there are lots of applications. In fact, I did another video about fixed points and the mean value theorem, which is very cool. But um, as a professor at Williams said, this is not why we're here today. Today, we're here just because of the proof. So let's see how we can achieve that. So even though this theorem is very special, it's actually a general case of another theorem of which it is a particular case. So no, I'm not Alice in Wonderlanding you, but there's this wonderful other theorem called Rolle's theorem. which says the following, again, if f is continuous on a, b, and differentiable on the open interval, and moreover, f of b equals to f of a. So suppose you have a function, and the starting point equals to the ending point, so f of a and f of b. It turns out there's some other point, c, on which 
the derivative equals to zero. So then, there is C in AB such that f prime of c equals to 0. And in fact, instead of using f, let me use another function g, because we will use that. So if this ending value of the function equals to the starting value, then there's some point where the derivative is 0. So, so you know, it makes sense. You know, you know, if the starting and the ending values are the same, at some point it basically has to have a maximum or a minimum, therefore the derivative is zero. And in fact, I'll do another video on the proof of that, but here's the interesting thing. Rolle's theorem is kind of a sp special case of the mean value theorem. If in the mean value theorem, f of b equals to f of a, you do get that. But interestingly, what we'll do, we'll actually use Rolle's theorem to prove the mean value theorem, and we'll do this by concocting a very clever function g. So, and here's the function without further ado. So again, let's take this as a given. Now, let g of x be the following. f of x, so you take your function f, and you're subtracting a very special linear function, namely nothing else than f of b minus f of a over b minus a x. So you're subtracting a linear function whose slope is precisely the slope of this secant line. And let's see what happens now. Well, let us now calculate g of a and g of b. So, g of a, again, by definition, in fact, I like what my advisor does, he always boxes things. So, so his math is a box of chocolates. Well, you always know what you're gonna get, a formula. But, so, g of a becomes f of a, minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a times a. So I just took this formula, plugged in a for x, and it turns out you can simplify this a little bit. So let's just expand this out. So that's f of a minus a, a over b minus a, f of b plus a over b minus a, f of a. And the nice thing is, the f of a's, they sort of come together, and you're left with f of a times 1 plus a over b minus a, minus a over b minus a, f of b. And this you can simplify, so 1 plus a over b minus a, Putting on the common denominator, it's b minus a plus a over b minus a, and that's b over b minus a. b minus a, okay. So it's f of a over b over b minus a. And then minus a over b minus a, f of b. Okay, you might say what's going on. <coughs> Just um, wait for it, because now let's calculate g of b. See what's going on. So g of b, okay, equals to f of b minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a times b. I can expand all that stuff out. So equals to f of b minus b over b minus a, f of b plus b over b minus a, f of a. And the nice thing is, we're, you know, on the one hand, for the first case, 
f of a is factored out, but here it turns out that the f of b is factored out quite nicely. <clears throat> and so you're left with, so 1 minus b over b minus a, f of b, plus b over b minus a, f of a. And well, 1 minus b over b minus a, that's equal to b minus a minus b over b minus a, and that's uh, minus a over b minus a. So that's minus a over b minus a, f of b, plus b over b minus a, f of a. And now look, how neat is that? Because those two things are actually equal. Here you have b over b minus a f of a, which you have here. And here you have minus a over b minus a f of b. Fantastic. So you have this weird function where we took f and subtracted the slope of the um, secant line. It turns out this new function has the property that its initial value equals to the ending value. And whenever this happens, we're on a roll because we can apply Rolle's theorem. So, um, g of b equals to g of a. So by Rolle's, g prime of c equals to zero, and all we need to do Again, that's just for some c in the interval a, b. And this c is actually the answer for the mean value theorem. All we need to do now is to calculate g prime. And I'd like to remind you that g of x is f of x minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a x. And now all we need to do is differentiate this. It looks really crazy, but remember, this huge thing is just a constant. So g prime of x is just f prime of x minus this constant times x, but that's just a linear function. Derivative of x is 1, so you're just left with f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And in particular, plugging it C, you have that G prime of C equals to F prime of C minus F of B minus F of A over B minus A. On the other hand, you know that it equals to zero by this property. So if you put that on the right hand side, you get f of b minus f of a over b minus a equals to f prime of c, which is exactly the statement of the mean value theorem. So again, just realize how cool it is. We use a special case of a theorem to actually prove a more general case, which involves a special case. So it's kind of weird, something weird going on, but this is not for you. All right, so if you like this and you want to see more theorems, and also if you want to see the proof of Rolle's theorem, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Three, two, one, Dr. Payam, hooray! <laughs> Thanks for watching, and today I will cover the mean value theorem, which is a theorem that will literally make you roll on the floor. Three, two, one, Dr. Paya. Hello! I almost slipped there, but today I will cover a proof of the mean value theorem, which is a theorem that will leave you on the roll. Wait, oh no. <laughs>